All right, we are back. This is NHL 20 Franchise Mode Calgary Flames. This is episode number 18. Welcome back to our official start of the regular season here uh, in the 2021-2022 regular season. Uh, we are set to start off our third full season, excuse me, uh, as the GM and uh, uh, as the uh, at the helm, sorry, I should say, of the Calgary Flames. So yes, welcome to episode 18 here as we get started uh, in the uh, preseason training camp here. You can see it's September 15th, uh, and we are set to, like I said, uh, uh, begin our third full season in which uh, we are, uh, our third season overall, in which we are uh, uh, controlling the Calgary Flames, in which we are trying to win a Stanley Cup, because it has been a, uh, a long time for the Calgary Flames since they have uh, been on top of the hockey world, and we're trying to get the Flames back up there with what we believe is an elite team. So yes, uh, after uh, episode 17 there, we uh, we uh, had the free agent episode there. Uh, if you missed it, definitely uh, I recommend you go and check out episode 17 in which uh, the Calgary Flames uh, made some significant moves in free agency. Uh, no more, none more, I should say, than uh, getting a starting goaltender uh uh, Jordan Bington, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, Jordan Bington is now officially a member of the Calgary Flames. Of course, this after David Rigg decided that he wanted to walk to free agency, went and signed with the Carolina Hurricanes, but that was all right uh, because we went out and got our first choice, even ahead of Reddick uh, in free agency, and that was uh, Jordan Bington. You can see they're 28 years of age, 86 overall. Of course, uh, won a Stanley Cup just two seasons ago with the uh, uh, St. Louis Blues. And uh, uh, played the last two seasons with the Blues, but they missed the playoffs the last two seasons. Uh, so uh, he decided to come over to a contending team where he can uh, once again play in the playoffs and uh, hopefully win another Stanley Cup. Uh, this time uh, with his second team. Uh, you can see there we uh, we uh, signed him to a four-year contract. $5.5 million, a pretty reasonable contract for a number one goalie in this league, uh, for a guy that can help you win a Stanley Cup. Uh, so yeah, not a bad contract there for four years for Jordan Bennington, uh, which will obviously take him into his early 30s. Uh, so that's not too bad. We brought back Cam Talbot, of course, uh, two episodes ago as our backup. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so it was a pretty good episode in the last one. I'm just going to show you our lineups now that you can see them on screen, uh, now that we are officially in the preseason training camp. Uh, so just a quick look here at our official uh, 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 lineups as they stand right now. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, just quickly put them together, what we project opening day to look like. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau's there, still at 90. Monaghan goes back up to 91. He was at 90. Uh, he jumps back up to 91. Where he spent most of the last season with Johnny Gaudreau at 91. Elias Lindholm still at 86 there. Matthew Kachuk staying at 86 there on the left side. Max Domi staying at 86 there down the middle. Uh, Andrew Mangiapane. Uh, he goes from an 82 to an 83. Again, Mangiapane, a guy that scored uh, 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 almost 40 goals last year, 37 goals for us last year, 28 the year before that uh, in a uh, top six row. Uh, so his first two seasons in top six row. Again, only 83 now, and uh, actually was only in 82 the last two seasons, uh, but it can put up close to 40 goals a season. So uh, not bad for Andrea Mangiapane. Sam Bennett uh, stays at an 80 there in the left uh, wing. He was a guy that we brought back in the last episode there. Uh, I believe 1.55 is what we signed him for for just one year uh, as we had him as a pending uh, RFA there. Uh, Michael Backlund. Uh, he stays at an 80, or he goes down to an 83. Sorry, he was an 84 last season. He goes down to an 83. Uh, so we're starting to see a little bit of a decline uh, by the 32-year-old Michael Backlund. But the big one here is Dylan Dubé. Uh, he jumps up from an 82 to an 84. So Dylan Dubé now uh, already one better than Michael Backlund, and even uh, better than Mangiapane. But again, um, overall Mangiapane is a better player because he puts up close to 40 goals a season. Dylan Dubé. Uh, yeah, he's only played on the third line, uh, but he obviously hasn't got close to that. He hasn't even hit 20 goals. Uh, but again, he hasn't played in the top six, uh, whereas Mangiapane has. But uh, it's nice to know we have Dylan Dubé. Uh, let's hope we don't get any injuries in this top six. But uh, a guy like maybe Dylan Dubé could probably jump up in there uh, if we did. Uh, the other thing is uh, Dylan Dubé is a centerman. Uh, is he a long-term plan to uh, be our third-line centerman uh, when Michael Backlund uh, starts to decline? Or, uh, or if we decide to move on from one of these players like Michael Backlund, who is making uh, 5.3 for three more years. If we have to down the road, long-term plan, uh, we could obviously switch Dylan Dubé back to the center position there. Uh, 84 overall, not a bad 
uh, third line player there at all. Uh, just taking a look quickly at our fourth line, there's Scott Wilson, 79, Andrew Kopp, who we signed in free agency there, 77. Uh, Christopher Stee goes up from a 78 to 79 for some reason. Uh, so that's a look at your forward group. Not bad overall. Again, we have a pretty good top six still. Uh, exact same top six that, uh, top six that we uh, finished last year with. We brought back uh, our third line improves with the, uh, Dylan Dubé going up. Uh, we brought back Sam Bennett. Uh, fourth line pretty much stays the same. Uh, we just replaced uh, Mark Jankowski with Andrew Kopp. Uh, here's, uh, here's what uh, the defensive core looks like. Say hello to your new top pairing here in Noah Hannafin and Yusuf Alamaki. Uh, last year, it was Mark Giordano up there with Noah Hannafin. Uh, this year, it's going to be Hannafin with Yusuf Alamaki. Hannafin, 89 overall. Uh, he stays at 89 uh, where he spent all of last season. Yusuf Valamaki jumps from 86 to an 88. So Valamaki jumping up to uh, elite status right there as expected. Again, this guy top four defenseman right now. Potential is medium elite. Uh, just 22 years of age for Yusuf Valamaki and just uh, 24 years of age for Noah Hannafin. And they're both already elite top two defensemen. Or I guess uh, Valamaki is listed as a top four. But really, they're both elite top two defensemen in this league. And uh, obviously, they have... Have both have a uh, medium elite potential, uh, so they're only going to get better as they're still in their young 20s. Uh, I mean, could you imagine what they're going to be by the time they hit their prime around 26, 27? Uh, they could be in the 90s for sure. Easy, uh, probably uh, early to mid 90s for sure. So not bad uh, that we have them. Uh, they're going to get our top minutes this year. Uh, like I said, Hannafin did get top line minutes last year, or top pairing minutes last year with Giordano. Uh, Valamaki did it. Uh, he was in our top four with Rasmus Sanderson. This year, it's going to be Valamaki and Hannafin getting all the ice time to continue to grow them uh, as our top defensemen. Uh, Bart Giordano, uh, like I said, he was on our top pairing last year. He goes down from an 89 to an 88. So we are uh, finally starting to see the decrease of Mark Giordano. I can't remember if he's... I think he did start this uh, this game as a 90, went down to an 89 last year, and now this year he's gone down to an 88. Um, I expected at 37, soon to be 38 years of age, that uh, Giordano would uh, uh, decline a little bit more rapidly. Uh, the fact that he's still at an 88 means he's still a pretty elite defenseman. I mean, he's still a top four defenseman in this league. Uh, you know, on most teams, he'd still be a top pairing defenseman. Um, um, I thought he might come down a little bit more than what he's at. Uh, but he's not, so that's a good thing for us, obviously, that uh, a team that's still trying to win the Stanley Cup, that we have pretty much three top pairing defensemen, uh, as Giordano still at an 88. Now, this season, he could still significantly decline. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he finished the season somewhere around 86, maybe, uh, 85, maybe, by the end of the season. Uh, definitely going into next year. I uh, expect anything from 85 below. Because, um, again, that's just uh, at that age, uh, that's just how rapidly they start to decline. Uh, but for now, happy with, uh, obviously, our captain uh, still staying as, as an elite uh, top pairing defenseman. On our second pairing there with Rasmus Anderson. Anderson, our only right shot defenseman uh, on this group. Uh, he stays at an 85, spent all of last year in 85. I was hoping he'd take a little bit of a jump uh, this year. Um, staying at an 85, top four defenseman. His uh, potential is still top four high. Um, so... Obviously, I don't think he's ever going to get to what Valamaki and Hannafin can get to. Uh, but if he can stay in the uh, mid to high 80s uh, as a top four defenseman, uh, that's all you can ask for out of Rasmus Anderson. Uh, Oliver Shillington does jump up by one. Again, I was hoping for a little bit more of a jump from Oliver Shillington, who's also 24 years of age. He jumps up to uh, 80 overall. Um, he's a top six defenseman. Still his top four potential. I wanted him one day to, uh, to be on a pairing with Anderson here in the top four. Still time for him to grow, uh, but right now, just an 80 overall for Oliver Shillington. And then there's Carl Gunnarsson, who we brought in as our sixth defenseman this year. Excuse me, with the departure of Travis Hamnick uh, in free agency to clear up some space to bring in uh, a goaltender. Uh, we had to get rid of Hamnick uh, and uh, Schlemko. Uh, so we took, uh, uh, we brought back in, or we brought in, I should say, Carl Gunderson, who is a defensive defenseman, uh, our only defensive defenseman on the team after we lost uh, uh, Travis Hamnick. 85 defensive awareness, 88, 86 there in the defensive stats. Not bad for a uh, top six defenseman. Uh, we could probably put him on our PK, but uh, we'll take a look at these guys' defensive, uh, these these top 40 guys and their defensive stats a little bit later. Uh, so just wanted to show you that quickly. Again, uh, that's not that's our projected opening day roster. We also have Jordan Bington, as mentioned, in goal. Cam Talbot. And then uh, our scratches here. Uh, Andrew Andrew Nielsen, excuse me, as our uh, extra 7th defenseman. And Devontae smith Pelly is our 13th forward there. Uh, so uh, we'll have them in training camp here as well. 
Uh, the other one I just want to show you here was our AHL. Uh, just take a quick look at uh, what we've got down there in the system. Uh, the only notable name uh, when we do switch there. Let's get there to the HL. Uh, is uh, Matthew Phillips here, 76 overall. Uh, he's the only one I really could see uh, competing for an NHL spot right now. You look at the rest of these guys, uh, they're not even close. Um, Mitch Hultz here, 74. Uh, this guy here, 73. Tola, Godin, still 72. Uh, so we got some guys down here. Um, we still have to sign our prospects. We're going to do that right now. Uh, but the rest of these guys aren't even close. Matthew Phillips, really the only one, uh, even on the defensive core. Uh, not a, any guys that are going to be competing for an NHL job. So what I think we will do is bring Matthew Phillips up, uh, give him a shot at competing for an NHL job. I highly, highly expect that he won't make it, that uh, uh, our NHL roster will look like this for opening day with uh, Devontae smith Pelly and Andrew Nielsen being on the NHL roster as our extra guys. Uh, but we'll give Phillip, Phillips a shot, I should say, uh, to crack the opening day roster. Uh, so we will do that here uh, in a second. I will do that. Um, yeah. Uh, we can actually, you know what, we can actually even just do that now. Uh, just bring up Matthew Phillips. Uh, give him a shot. Excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. 76 will bring him up into the NHL. Give him a shot. Um, I guess we don't really have to send anybody down then. Uh, we'll just scratch everybody that's uh, not playing. So, yeah, we don't have a lot of competition this year uh, yet again for NHL spots. Uh, you can go best lines right now. Uh, we will fix that in a second. Uh, for both the NHL and the NHLs, we'll do the preseason train camp. Um, what was it? The last thing I wanted. Oh, I wanted to go and uh, uh, into here into view contracts, assign uh, our prospects, the guys that we just drafted. So uh, when we go here by uh, unsigned players, uh, you can see we got uh, some of our prospects that we need to sign here. So uh, when you go here by uh, potential, here's the guy that we took uh, for in the first round in this past draft. I forget what we took him at. 20 something overall uh where's he uh, drafted 23rd overall this year by us uh with our first round pick uh so he's our top prospect at t uh ratty uh is his uh his name i think he was in the finnish elite league uh so we got him we got another guy here uh just a few guys here i wouldn't mind signing to their entry level contracts uh, so let's get them signed here uh we'll offer them their uh entry level contracts uh, we'll do the first uh, first few guys here. I'm going by potential. Uh, the contract offer was similarly not in my consideration today. If you're certain, uh, oh, okay, uh, that's odd. Um, I'm giving you what you are asking for. Uh, or I guess he's not. He's asking for a little bit higher. We just don't have the space. So, uh, all right, that's all right. We'll uh, we'll try some of these other guys here. See what they say. And uh, did he accept that already? Uh, we'll offer this guy as well. Uh, no, not enough money. So uh, we offered... Uh, did we not get Raddy? Did he decline that as well? Yeah, okay. So sorry. Uh, I did not see that message the first time. All right. So uh, we don't have the salary cap space, it looks like, right now to sign any of these prospects. I thought we had a little bit more salary cap space um, coming into this episode, but I guess not. So uh, never mind. We won't, uh, we won't uh, sign these guys. So... I thought we still had uh, uh, like $1.7 million to work with, but I guess not. Uh, what's our salary cap space? At? Oh, okay, 0. 0.53. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we have no salary cap space at all. Uh, all right, so we can't even sign our prospects. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, on that topic, <laughs> let's take a look at uh, something else I wanted to show you quickly here. And that is uh, back in the contract screen. Uh, just before we start the preseason training camp. And that is to, nope, not in the contract screen. That is to uh, pending free agents. Nope, not pending free agents. Uh, where did I see it here? Oh, I have not done this yet, so not hire staff. It is, I guess, in the contract. It's the extensions ones is what I want to go by. Uh, so yeah, I think you just go here. Uh, yeah, there we go. Wanting extensions at the bottom here. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. Um, take a look at this. This is our free agent class for next year. This is what the Calgary Flames... The, now, if you watched the last episode, I talked about how I wanted to get a goalie with term, uh, like we did with Jordan Bigington for four years, because I did not want to worry about having to sign a starting goalie again next year. Because take a look at what we have to do next year. 
all of these guys are uh, their contracts are up next year. So you have one year left, and then next uh, free uh, summer at free agency, we have to sign all of these guys. Take a look at these names: Johnny Gaudreau, Mark Giordano, Max Domi, Matthew Kachuk, Andrew Mangiapane. Uh, the rest of these guys uh, really not on the front burner right now. But uh, we just talked about Mangiapane in our top six. Kachuk is one of our core pieces. Domi is one of our core pieces. Giordano is still one of our elite defensemen and captain. And of course, Johnny Gaudreau is maybe the face of the franchise. We have some of the biggest pieces uh, we could possibly imagine to sign here in free agency. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a tough year. So the good news is all of these players, though, uh, as their contracts do expire, they all want extensions to stay in the, uh, with the Calgary Flames. So that's the good news. Even Giordano, who's uh, going to be 38 years of age next year, he wants to re-sign with the Flames. So um, we're not going to do it right now because we have a lot to think about. Obviously, I, oh, this is going to be tough. I, I want to bring back uh, all five of these guys. I have a feeling we're not going to be able to do that. Um, when you just look at the salary of what they're making this year, Mangiapane's making 4.3 this year. He's putting up, if he puts up 40 goals again this season, again, he put up 37 last year, 28 the year before. If he can put up 40 goals this season, you can bet he's going to be asking for a lot more than that. Uh, Kachuk's already at 7 million. He's going to be asking for more than that. Max Domi is making the most of all these guys already at 8.3. Um, he's going to be asking for more than that. Uh, obviously, Giordano, uh, that will be the interesting one because he might be asking for more, but you're not going to be paying a 38-year-old um, to come back at anything close to what he's making now. And then Johnny Gaudreau is going to be the most interesting one. So uh, obviously, he's going to be asking for a lot more. So let's just take a look right now at what they're asking for. And then uh, we will uh, start to, uh, in the next couple episodes here, uh, really in the next two episodes here, start to um, um, really... Uh, gauge uh, our options here and uh, decide which ones are the most important to sign first and uh, which ones we maybe can wait till free agency but it's going to be tough we've got some pretty big names here um, you know basically uh, this will decide how um, how much longer our window is open to win the Stanley Cup uh, if you know if we can't get a good chunk of these guys back at all um, we could have a very th this could be our last year in uh, the window to win a Stanley Cup so it, this this determines a lot so let's just take a look at what these guys are asking for now that it is September and then uh, as the months go on we will uh, start to uh, uh, make contract offers um, and try and maybe bargain with some of these players and see uh, what we can get for contracts uh, it's going to be tough um, to see if we can get some of them to maybe come down I got you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just going to be tough. But let's take a look at what they want. So uh, here's Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, let's offer, or let's uh, offer him a contract extension by just seeing what he wants right now. So Johnny Gaudreau wants to stay in Calgary long term. Eight years, he wants $9.375 million. Um, right off the bat, that's not, that's not bad for eight years. You are buying out basically the rest of Johnny Gaudreau's career. 28 years of age. Uh, obviously, that will take him well into his uh, late 30s. Uh, like I said, that will pretty much be the rest of his NHL career. Um, 9.3 is not bad, but again, how much is the cap going up? Uh, that's the interesting conversation. Um, he's not asking for double digits. He's staying in the single digit figures, which is nice. Um, but again, how much will the cap go up? Uh, that's still a lot to play, but or pay. But uh, he is going to be your elite superstar piece that um, you know you want to build around to win a Stanley Cup. So uh, that's what Jer or, uh, Goudreau is asking for. Let's see what Giordano is asking for. This one might be the most interesting. Uh, he is asking for yeah, he's asking for one year at eight million dollars. So this is the tough part here. Um, it's not the money; it's the term. The fact that he only wants one year um, is telling me that if he does not get his eight million dollars he might try a different team. Basically, he knows he doesn't have a lot of years left. He wants to go somewhere and get paid a lot of money for his last year, which sucks because I was hoping we could bring him back on. You know, he spent his entire career uh, as a Calgary Flame, um, probably will have his jersey retired uh, in the Saddle Dome when it's all said and done. Um, you know, probably will be up there for uh, one of the greatest or, or, or one of the longest serving members of the Flames. Obviously, a captain, won a Norris Trophy, uh, has done a lot for this organization, but... Um, you know, it's tough. We can't pay him $8 million next year. I was hoping he would want to come back for two, three years, um, you know, on a bridge deal uh, for, you know, $3 million. That would have been, you know, $3, 4000000 million maybe. Uh, that even would have been high, though. Um, the fact that he wants eight for one year, uh, I have a feeling this could be Giordano's last year uh, as a Calgary Flame. Um, let's take a look at Max Domi here. 
Domi is asking for 7.8 for five years. So this is interesting. He's asking for less money than he's making now, uh, but a little bit more term. Uh, he wants five more years. Uh, Domi, only 26 years of age. That'll take him to his early 30s, obviously. Um, uh, 7.8 is what he's asking for. Sorry. Yeah, 7.8. Uh, not bad. Um, it's nice that he's asking for a little bit less than what he's making now at 8.3. Uh, here's going to be an interesting one. Matthew Kachuk. Uh, he's done a lot in the regular season. Hasn't done a lot in the Stanley Cup playoffs. What he's, is he going to be asking for here? Uh, let's take a look. Uh, oh, only 6.3 for three years. So he's asking for a bridge contract again. Um, that's not bad. 23 years of age. That'll take him till he's 26. Uh, that'll take him right into his prime. We'll, we'll see exactly what he is uh, by by then. And he's also only asking for 6.3. That's not a bad... I almost want to do that now. I'm not going to. But uh, I almost want to offer that contract now. Um, hmm. That's not bad. 23 years of age. Uh, yeah, we're not getting a lot of term. Like I said, only three years. But uh, that will give us a good... Um, you know, the fact... The thing with Kachuk is, like I said, he's had such good regular seasons uh, playing on just the second line. Um, but he hasn't proven himself in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And he still hasn't really... Even in the regular season... Uh, let's just take a quick look here at his stats. Uh, really quickly. Um... You know, even in the regular season, he hit 51 points the last two seasons. Uh, so discard this 77-point uh, season, uh, which was really good. But uh, the last two seasons, 51 points, exactly. Um, he just barely cra cracked 20 goals in his first one. Didn't even get to 20 goals last year. Um, so that's that's decent second-line numbers. Um, you know, I want him to prove to us that he can be a top-line player. Um, you know, I know we're not playing him on the top line, but um, he's had chances in the last two seasons. We, we, you know, there's times throughout the season that we did put him in our top line with Gaudreau and Monaghan. Um, I want him to be a top line player and show that, and he hasn't shown that yet. And uh, obviously in the Stanley Cup playoffs, he definitely hasn't shown that. Um, not the best playoff numbers, just six points last year, just uh, four points the year before that. Um, you know, you need more out of a guy like Kachuk, who, you know, really could be our next best player on this team um you know is he a contender to be the next captain of this team if we don't bring back Giordano uh now that it's looking like we probably won't um so you know we want him to do a little bit more um so that's why I don't want to sign him to that big big contract uh just yet so it makes a lot of sense actually to sign him to a bridge contract because in the next three years uh Matthew could chuck prove to us that he is a top line player and then we could sign him to a pretty big contract at 26 years of age or if he continues the way he is, then maybe he's just a second line, really good second line player uh, on this team. And we won't want to be paying him the big bucks. Uh, maybe we just want to pay him, um, you know, seven, eight million dollars to stay on our second line. Um, you know, when when if he was a top line player, uh, again, if the cap is going up, maybe he could be making uh, close to double digits. So you know what? I'm actually going to offer him this contract. I like that. Three years. I like the term. I think that's perfect for us. Uh, and I think the con or the salary is perfect too. 6.3 is not a lot. Um, you know, for a guy that, again, still puts up 50 points and a guy that has the potential to get better, elite medium is his potential. Um, 23 years of age, Kachuk, Kachuk should easily, uh, by the time this contract is done, easily be in the 90s. There's no reason he can't be a 90, 91, 92 even, um, you know, even a little bit higher, early to mid 90s uh, by the fact, by the time this contract's up. And that would be a steal at 6.3. Um, so let's do that. Let's offer Matthew Kachuk this contract. Uh, that's what he wants. He's going to discuss it with his friends and family, of course, and get back to us. Um, but uh, we're offering him exactly what he wants. Uh, the last one I want to take a look here is Andrew Mangiapane. Uh, let's just take a quick look at Mangiapane. Uh, asking for 5.75 uh, for two years. So uh, we're not going to offer him this right now because I want to see uh, this year if he can continue to hit that 40 goal plateau. Uh, if he can get up there again, at least 30 goals, and then uh, we'll have a better, uh, better understanding. Um, you know, if he is, but you know, what? 5.75 is not bad. Don't get me wrong. Uh, even for a guy that puts up 20 goals on your second line, that's not a bad contract. Again, he just wants two years. Uh, that'll take him till he's 27. There, um, that's similar to Kachuk. That's not a bad contract to offer him. Um, let's see. Let's see at least how he starts the first half of the season, and then maybe we'll offer him that contract. Um, so Kachuk, and then if we could get Mangiapane done, um, the interesting ones will be uh, Domi and Gaudreau. I kind of want to get both Domi and Gaudreau done as well before a free agency. Uh, the interesting one will be Giordano. I just have a feeling we won't be bringing back Mark Giordano now that I see what he's asking for. So, um, yeah, 
I just thought we'd look at that. That was interesting. Um, it's going to be a very busy free agency, uh, but we're going to try and get some of that work done uh, before the free agent period in the next couple episodes here. So uh, without uh, without further ado, I guess uh, we should jump right into the preseason training camp, and then uh, we'll even probably start a bit of the regular season uh, at the end of this episode here. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, what we've done for the last two preseason training camps uh, where we uh, give our guys that are fighting for the team the most minutes. Uh, so let's go to edit lines here. Uh, just quickly, I'll show you what we're working with. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So basically, what I'm going to do is take out uh, uh, Sean Monaghan, who we know is uh, a lock for this team at 91. Uh, we'll bring in Matthew Phillips, uh, and we'll give these guys a lot of the ice time uh, that are fighting for... You know what? There's not really anybody fighting for the last few spots here. Um, I'm just trying to think here. Uh, da, 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 da. It's really it's really between Cop and Phillips. Uh, but you know what? We'll still do it. So we'll take out uh, Johnny Gaudreau as well. And bring in Devontae smith Pelly. Uh So give these guys uh, the minutes here. Uh, I'll put our fourth line up there. And then just let these guys really battle it out for the... It's, so it's really going to be between these uh these this top line these top two lines here so for steve cop wilson smith pelly and phillips these are the guys that are going to be fighting for the last couple spots on our team uh really have a feeling that it's going to be uh, uh this is going to be our fourth line uh Devontae smith pelly is going to be our 13th forward phillips is going to be our uh start in the ahl but uh, we'll give them the shot to fight it out here um you never know maybe matthew phillips will have an excellent preseason training camp where we can't say no to him uh, and Devontae smith pelly will have to go to the AHL. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to sim every game uh, just like this. Uh, nobody on the defensive end really fighting. Um, I want to get. I want this as our top. Obviously, this is our top six. I'm not going to bring in Andrew Nielsen. Uh, we have to keep the, all these guys in. So there's really no uh, competition on the back end. It's just that forward spot. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll do. So what I'm going to do is go and sim this entire preseason training camp uh, game by game. And uh, then after the preseason train cap, we will lock down our official, our official roster, I should say, and then uh, start our regular season. So give me a second. I'll be right back after preseason. All right, so we're back here. We just finished simming the preseason there. The Calgary Flames go 4-2-1 uh, through seven games in the preseason. Uh, and yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a bad preseason at all. Uh, something massive happened, but I'll get to that in a second. Just want to show you quickly here uh, what we are looking at here. For uh, stats, uh, stats wise, uh, so we played, like I said, we played our guys the top minute. Bennett led us with seven points there. Hannafin, uh, Backlund actually did really well for not getting a lot of minutes. Same with Lindholm. Uh, there's Rusty, he put up four points in seven games plus two. Uh, I guess we should be looking at forwards here. Uh, forwards, uh, just so we can judge what we got here. Uh, Phillips did go three points through seven games. Uh, Wilson went two points through. Uh, Cop, two points plus two plus three. Uh, I'm just looking here. Phillips went plus three. Uh, Devontae Smith Pelly two points. Uh, and yeah, so um, yeah, like I said, not much. You know, three points and a plus, or yeah, three points and a neutral plus minus rating. Uh, Smith Pelly went two points and a neutral plus. So not much of a competition there for the final spot. Uh, we'll give the edge over to Smith Pelly because that's what we signed him for was to be our uh, 13th for. Um, you know, we'll give him. The veteran status. We'll we'll let Matthew Phillips, who still has, um, you know, I guess he does. Yeah, he still has top six uh, potential. We'll let him grow in the AHL. So we'll send Phillips back down um, and just start our NHL roster like that. Uh, just wanted to quickly take a look at our goaltending. Uh, Talbot played four games and Bingington played three games for us. Um, just switched them about halfway through. Uh, nine three three through four games for Cam Talbot. Uh, 937 for the three games for Jordan Bangington, who's obviously our opening day starter. Uh, just thought, uh, just thought we would look at that. 1.67 goals against, though. That's really good for a Bangington in three games. Uh, hopefully he can stay like that. So, uh, give me a second here. I'm going to go and, uh, edit lines and then, uh, get ourselves set for opening day roster. Uh, opening day, I should say, our opening day roster. And then, uh, we will start the regular season here against the Edmonton Oilers. So give me a second. All right, we are back. So welcome to opening day here. 2021-2022 season kicks off with a date with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, we actually played them twice in the first three games of the season. Uh, but our first game of the season officially against the Oilers at Rogers Place. So we are set to kick off our regular season here. Uh, like I said, we went, what, four 
uh, two and one or something there in the preseason. Uh, but I went ahead and finished uh, editing all of our lines here for opening day. Uh, this is what our opening day roster looks like here. Uh, like I said, exactly as we projected it to be. Nothing changing here. Uh, nothing changing on our defensive core either. Uh, just wanted to quickly show you special teams. Uh, I just left the power play line. I went by best lines uh, to start off this. And this is what they gave us for the power play units. Uh, the only move I made was put Valimaki in there instead of Dubé. Uh, I kind of wanted Dubé in there. Uh, that would have been cool. But I also want uh, use of Valimaki in there. Uh, but I actually like what they've done with this top unit. Uh, basically, they just uh, bring back our top unit from last year. Just replace a Giordano with Hannafin. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then, yeah, this is exactly how they had the second unit there. Again, uh, Mangiapane, 40 goals last year with Domi Backlund. Uh, Backlund played really well for us as well. Giordano and Valamaki. Want to make sure Valamaki's getting power play time. 4-4 uh, four and four looks like that. Uh, PK looks like that. I had to edit the PK a little bit. Uh, I went out and got our best defensive forwards and defensive defensemen. Believe it or not, Carl Cunnerson, who we brought in as a defensive defenseman uh, to replace Hamnick, who was our top penalty killer last year, uh, does not even crack our uh, PK uh, because uh, Valamaki actually has surprisingly good defensive stats. Look at that. 90 defensive awareness, but look at shot blocking and stick checking. 94. Uh, Giordano, still 93, 89, and 90 in that department. Uh, not bad. Hannafin, uh, he still has really good stats too. 88 defensive awareness, 92, 92. And uh, uh, Anderson, 87, 92, and 92. Uh, that's all better than what uh, Carl Gunnarsson still has. Uh, so that's our defense. Uh, Backlund, uh, Monaghan, Lys Lindholm, Max Domi, our best defensive forwards. Monaghan still our best defensive forward all around with his uh, defensive stats at 91, 89, 91. There's a look at Backlund. And then uh, look there at uh, Lindholm. Uh, 89, 85, 88, and uh, even Max Domi there. Uh, Lindholm and uh, Monaghan have the best face-offs, uh, so that's why they're at center. Uh, all four of those guys, of course, can play center. There's just a look at our uh, five on three. Again, this is how we're going to start the season. Uh, obviously, we're going to switch things up uh, if we uh, see the PK or the PP, um, you know, not doing good like it was last season. We had a horrible power play and PK to start the regular season last year, so we'll definitely switch it up uh, if we're seeing that. Ah, uh, this is a quick look at your four and fours. Uh, and then your three on threes will look like that for overtime. Uh, pretty much the same pairings as we had last year. Uh, extra attackers there. Shootout looks like that. Top players there in the shootout. And then, uh, of course, Jordan Bigotin, this is his net. Uh, he'll get the start. There's your extra forwards, Devontae smith Pelly and Andrew Nielsen. So uh, that is our opening day roster. We are set to, uh, obviously, contend for the Stanley Cup in our third straight year of the Flames. Uh, Matthew Phillips, by the way, did go back to the AHL and will start as our top centerman down there. Now, uh, the one thing I did want to show you, as I mentioned, there was something pretty big that happened off camera there when I was simming through the uh, pre uh, preseason training camp, and you can probably guess what it is. Uh, Matthew Kachuk has accepted our offer, uh, his contract extension uh, that we offered him. Uh, he said, uh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was an easy decision for him. He says he really appreciates the, t uh, or he really uh, appreciated getting the term that he wanted out of the contract. So that was big, big. But he also said it was an e easy decision to come back uh, to the Calgary Flames. I know they all say that, but, um, you know, it really does mean, uh, you know, he wanted to stay here. Uh, so he does sign that three years that he wanted there, uh, as you can see right there, contract extension. He's making $7 million this year, uh, but then he'll make 6.3 for the next three years. So he actually takes a pay cut for the next three years to stay with the Calgary Flames. And like I said, that term is perfect because at 23 years of age, uh, we, you know, if he stays elite medium, he should be in the early to mid 90s by the time this contract's up and then we should be able to pay him a pretty uh, much larger contract. Uh, but however, if he does not perform well or he doesn't grow uh, from 86 and he just stays as a second line forward, um, you know, then maybe we don't offer him a, uh, a big contract at the next one. Maybe we just offer him another bridge contract. I don't know. But either way, I think this is a really good contract for Kachuk to prove himself and continue to show. Uh, like I said, I, I talked about his stats there. You know, really good second line numbers. I want him to prove that he can be a top uh, elite player on this team uh, uh, during the regular season, but mostly in the playoffs as well. So I'm uh, really happy that we got Kachuk done. He's out of the way. He's signed for another three years after this year. Uh, we will continue to work on those other guys. Like I said, I really want to gauge uh, Mangiapane in the first half of this season, maybe even the first quarter, and see what he's on pace for. If he's on pace for close to 30 to 40 goals again, I'm going to offer him his two-year contract that he wants at five point some million, uh, and then we'll work on Goudreau and Domi and uh, obviously Giordano as well. But 
let's uh, let's right now let's uh, start the regular season here against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, like I said, we have uh, a lot of uh, a lot to prove this season, and obviously a Stanley Cup to win. Uh, the Oilers just beating us last year for that Pacific Division title. Uh, pretty fitting that we see them twice in the first three games this season. So you saw our opening day roster. We are set. Let's get going. Uh, we'll try and sim uh, as much as we can here to start the regular season, uh, and then we will uh, obviously end this episode here. So uh, here we go. First game of the season, day one, opening day, Flames and Oilers. Here we go. Uh, let's go by real-time sim for this one. Uh, there we go. Opening goal of the season on the power play, our new look power play with uh, uh, Hannafin in there. Sean Monaghan gets the first goal of the Calgary Flames season. Max Domi quickly getting a goal in there as well. Uh, and then a goal by uh, Jesse Pugliarvi. And then some quick ones here by a new member of the Calgary Flames. His first in a Flames uniform, Carl Gunnarsson on the back end on our third pairing scores. Our defensive defenseman scores for some reason. Sam Bennett also scoring his first goal of the season. And then Leon Dreidsettel getting his first. So what a first period. Six goals in that first period. Uh, there, as you can see. Uh, let's go to the second period here. Uh, good to see a couple guys, though, uh, like uh, Gunnarsson getting in there, Sam Bennett as well, uh, Monaghan. Uh, expect a lot out of Sean Monaghan, who hasn't been big in the goal department uh, as of late. Uh, so after six goals in the first period, uh, the second period looks pretty quiet. We're hanging on to a two-goal lead here against the Oilers, and third period of play here. And we're just doing the real set, ten, real sim, a uh, real time sim. Holy crap! A uh, real time sim here uh, for the uh, first bit. Look at Carl Gunnarsson, a two goal game in his Flames debut. What is going on? Carl Gunnarsson leading the Calgary Flames in goals this season. I never thought I would say that. As our sixth defenseman and a defensive defenseman. Uh, Yusuf Valimaki, good to see him on the top pairing get his first of the season. Again, Valimaki's not an offensive defenseman. He's a two-way defenseman, but expecting a pretty big year out of him uh, now that he has uh, got uh, top line minutes, or top pairing minutes, I should say, for the first time. Uh, so pretty good opening game for the Calgary Flames. We went, what, 6-2 there over our uh, arch division rivals, the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, I know it's only game one of the season, but the fact that we already won a divisional game is huge. Every divisional game is going to be huge, um, you know, if we want to win the Pacific again. Uh, so here is a look at uh, Michael Backlund leading us with three assists there. Uh, Carl Gunnar said three point night in his Flames debut and a plus four. You can't go wrong there uh, by Carl Gunnarsson. I did not expect he would be the first star of the game, but uh, he definitely is in this department there. Uh, Sam Bennett, two point night. Valimaki Goudreau getting a point here. Uh, Monaghan as well. Manjipani Dube uh, and onward. Uh, Kachuk Domi as well. Lots of guys getting in, obviously. And a 9-2-9 in his Calgary Flames debut. Jordan Bingington goes 9-2-9. So quietly, uh, Bingington, not a bad night there. Uh, making 26 saves on 28 shots there uh, in his first official game as a Calgary Flame. So that's what you want to see there. Um, obviously, that's what we're expecting. <laughs> Look at Carl Gunnarsson leading us in points there. So uh, let's keep going here. Uh, we'll sim up to our next game here against the Montreal Canadiens. It is our home opener against Montreal. So let's get right into it here. Simulate. And this one will go period by period. So, uh, all right. So here we go. Flames and Habanadians. Uh, how do I go period by period again here? Uh, there's Johnny Gaudreau getting his first goal of the season, beating Mike Condon. Uh, uh I just push. Yeah, okay. I forgot how to go period by period here. That's insane. Uh, so, Gaudreau, Monaghan, Mangiapane. There's Mangiapane's first of the season. Again, hopefully first of many for Andrew Mangiapane, who's on a contract year. Uh, definitely want to give him what he's asking for in that contract. Uh, you know what? If he even has a good season, I wouldn't mind even getting a little bit more term. Maybe we can see if he will go up to three, four years instead of just two years. Uh, but again, we'll judge it on the first uh, quarter half of the season. Uh, Monaghan, two goals in two games. Two power play goals in two games for Sean Monaghan. Second period, uh, it looks like Sam Bennett has his second goal in as many games. And third period, uh, and it is Philip Deneau and Jonathan Druin trying to make a late comeback. But the Calgary Flames uh, win this one 4-2. to two. Uh, So we now start the season 2-0-0. Oh oh. uh, not a bad way to start. Uh, pretty good uh, night there. Top line goes two points there. Two points Kachuk, two points Monaghan. Uh, and Jordan Bennington, 9 4 1. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful in his first official home game as a Calgary Flame. Love the start here. I know we're only two games in, but I love the start here. Uh, this is what you want to see here. So uh, we got the Edmonton Oilers again, this time uh, at home, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so again, we'll see the Oilers. Uh, two times in our first uh, three games of the season, and then we got a couple road games coming up there. Uh, so let's jump right in here. Simulate. All right. Here we go. First period, Oilers, Flames, 
And it is a goal by Matthew Kachuk. Short-handed goal by Matthew Kachuk. That's nice to see. Funny, he's not on a PK, but for some reason he gets a short-handed goal. But we'll take it, obviously. Uh, I believe that's Kachuk's first of the season. Second period here. Uh, we get another goal from Sam Bennett, who now has three goals in three games on that fourth line. Again, we brought him back on that contract uh, for just one year at $1.5 million. Waited all the way till like August to sign him. Uh, but he's got three goals in his first three games. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins scores for the Oilers. Third period, do we hang on? Uh, they tie it up. Connor McDavid sends this game to overtime. So unfortunately, we give the Oilers a point in this one. We grab a point as well. Can we get that extra point here in the divisional game? Nothing. How about in a shootout? Ah, uh, we do. We get the shootout winner, Gaudreau and Kachuk scoring for us in the shootout there. Uh, so not bad. We pick up two points. We stay undefeated. Uh, but the Oilers do get a point out of it, unfortunately. Uh, Jordano, his first two points of the season, I believe there. 909 for Jordan Bington. Still a pretty good game. Um, you know, uh, still over 900 in the save percentage there. Uh, but yeah, it's been really solid for the first three games there in a Calgary Flames uniform. So uh, not bad. We're again, we're three zero and zero to start the season. Uh, we got a couple games here against Nashville, Chicago, uh, Philly coming up there, and then uh, uh, I'll see what we have after that. I'll see if we can finish this month of October though. That uh, wouldn't be a bad way to start uh, this or end this episode, I should say. Uh, all right, so here we go. Nashville Flames. First period, 1-0 on a goal by Mangiapane. His second of the season on the power play. Uh, second period, wow, what a second period. Domi, Monaghan, Dubé all scoring. Uh, big goals there. Another power play goal for uh, Max Domi. I'm liking our power play so far. I don't know what it's at, uh, but we're scoring a lot of power play goals. Compared to last year, this is a really good power play. Up 4-0, heading into the third period. Uh, we'll add one more. They add one. Uh, former Flame Tarek Ryan scores on Bingington, uh, but we get one from Andrew Kopp. His first as a Flame uh, on the fourth line from Andrew Kopp. We'll take this one 5-1 final. Uh, love that. Beautiful stuff there. Three-point night for Mark Giordano. Uh, two-point night there for Yusuf Vela. Mackie on the top pairing. Domi as well. Uh, two-point night. And then uh, another solid night for Jordan Bington. Look at that. 9-5-8. That's just, oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving that signing, or that, uh, yeah, that free agent signing of Jordan Bington. I really, really uh, was upset that we didn't get David Riddick back uh, this year. But I'm starting uh, to like it more and more that we got Bington instead of uh, of uh, Riddick this year. We'll have to see how Riddick's doing in uh, Carolina as well. Um, so back-to-back -back nights. Do we want to give Cam Talbot a game? I think we do. I think we want to give Cam Talbot his first game of the season. Uh, Bingington has been lights out. Uh, but let's get Cam Talbot into some action here quickly. Uh, so we'll throw Talbot in there. Uh, we don't over want to overplay uh, Bingington either. So we got to manage him uh, throughout the season. Uh, so we'll give Cam Talbot a game here. Can we stay undefeated? We're 4 0 and old to start the season. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau, there's another power play goal uh, after one period. Oh my god, look at that second period. Uh, they get one by uh, David Savard, but we get one from Scott Wilson on the fourth line. Yusuf Valamaki uh, beats James Reimer, and uh, even Johnny Gaudreau putting in his second of the game. And third period. Uh, they had a couple, we had a couple. Uh, they get one from Debrinket and Nylander. And then we get one from uh, a couple from Kopp on the... Why is Andrew Kopp on the power play? What the hell is going on? A power play goal from Andrew Kopp and Johnny Gaudreau. So I'm... Okay, this is weird because Matthew Kachuk scored a goal shorthanded. And he's not on our PK. And Andrew Kopp scored a goal um, so far this season on the power play. And he's not on our power play. So this is weird. I don't know why those guys are out there. Uh, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. I mean, things are working right now. Five-point night for Johnny Gaudreau. Um, that is a pretty big night for Gaudreau, who uh, actually has a hat trick. I didn't see that. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau, first hat trick of the season uh, for the Calgary Flames, and it comes off of their superstar. So I'm really starting to think maybe we should just sign Johnny Gaudreau to his uh, $9 million contract that he wants for eight years. Um, you know, the way he started this season, he's on fire. Uh, we might have to do that. A uh, two-point night for Hannafin, Monaghan, Lindholm. Uh, and onward, and Cam Talbot, 8 7 5 eh, not the best start, uh, or not the best game in his uh, debut this season, uh, but not bad. We'll go back to uh, Bingington, though, for sure. And, oh, oh here's, a, here's an injury. Sean Monaghan has been injured, growing. His estimated return is the 18th. Um, crap, that's pretty soon. That's not long, though. It's not long-term. So what we will do is we will just throw in Devontae smith Pally. because uh, I don't even think, uh, don't even think it will be a game. Now, if it is a game, we're going to have to change it up. Oh, yeah, it will be a game against Philly. Shit. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so we'll have to go quickly. We'll just move everybody up by one. And Smith Pelly can play. Ah. 
No, you know what we'll do is we'll put like that. We'll put Dubat in the middle. Um, yeah. It's nice we have Dylan Dubé because he is a versatile player. Can switch to the middle if we need him to. Uh, so it might only be for a game that we're up without Monaghan. Uh, but, uh, yeah. All uh, right, so let's sim up to this uh, Philly game. And then we'll also get Bington back in that. That's what I wanted to do. Do that really quickly. Come on. There we go. All right, goalies. And then we'll end this episode here pretty soon. Uh, get... Bingington in net. All right, so here we go. Uh, Philly and Calgary. We are 5-0-0 to start the season. Do we stay undefeated? Uh, as we got, as we welcome uh, Johnny Gaudreau's childhood team. Uh, and Gaudreau leading us there in points with nine points in five games. Uh, fitting, playing against the Flyers. Uh, so here we go. First period. Ah, they get two goals. Claude Giroux scoring twice, beating Jordan Bingington. Second period. Uh, we tie the game up on goals by Wilson and Gaudreau. Staying red hot third period do we pull away yes we do johnny gaudreau continues to be our mvp to start this season uh that's another two goal performance by johnny gaudreau and we uh beat the flyers we actually sneak out of this one because look at the shots 40 to 28 shots for the philly flyers um either that was a really good game by bingington or uh our defense just fell asleep there because they had 40 shots on net but uh the biggest story here maybe johnny gaudreau continuing his mvp like start to this season Two goal performance yet again after a five goal performance in that last game. And a really good night for Bingington. Give Bingington credit. Let in the first two goals there in the first period to Claude Jardou, but comes back with a really solid game, making 38 saves for a 9 5 0 save percentage. Again, he's a number one elite Stanley Cup goaltender for a reason. I'm so happy we got him. Uh, so 6 0 0 to start the season. And now we've got the struggling San Jose Sharks who are 1 4 1 on the season. And look who's back, Sean Monahan. Uh, so perfect. Uh, so we will uh, uh, obviously just switch things back to where they were. Uh, pretty nice that Max Domi, Michael Backlund stepping up, even Dylan Dubé stepping up in uh, the absence of Sean Monaghan. We'll take Devontae smith Pelly out here and get Monaghan back in. So all the lines going back to the way they were. Uh, and we'll play Monaghan back there with uh, Goudreau and Lindholm. And uh, so it looks like we got San Jose, Florida, and then we might have a couple games to end off this month, uh, Dallas and Nashville, and then we'll end this episode here. So uh, let's try and sim through these games really quickly here. Um, perfect start to the season, by the way, for the Flames. All right, first period against San Jose, 1-0, Sam Bennett. Second period, 1-1, one, one, uh, Logan Couture. Third period, yeah, we hang on. Mark Giordano, his first of the season is a game winner in the third period. 2-1, uh, we'll take it, obviously. Uh, and another really 9-7-0 save percentage for Jordan Bennington. Um At the beginning of the next episode, we'll take a look at uh, the stats because I think Bennington might be leading the league in save percentage right now. 7-0-0 uh, to start the season. This is an amazing start for the Calgary Flames. Back-to-back -back nights. Uh, should we go back to Cam Talbot? Oh, I don't know. Bing you know what? Bennington's playing too hot right now. Talbot didn't have the best game in his debut. I'm just going to stick with uh, Jordan Bennington at this point. So let's just keep rolling. I mean, he has been red hot. All right, Florida, Calgary, first period, nothing, second period. Two goals by the Flames, one by them. Uh, they get one from Tippett, Monaghan, and Domi. Third period, do we hang on? Yeah, we do, we do. Okay, good. Uh, Jordan on the power play, Monaghan, they get one from Michael Matheson. Flames hang on. Uh, I'm not going to look at the stats there. That's a 4-2 win for the Calgary Flames. Uh, we got the Dallas Stars next here. Uh, okay, yeah, draft class. I cannot believe this start to the season for the Calgary Flames. This is incredible. 8-0-0 uh, to start the season for the Calgary Flames that have to be leading the league in that category. All right. Uh, first period against the Stars. What a period it is. Sean Monaghan, Johnny Gaudreau, uh, twice. Michael Backlund, Sam Bennett. They get one from their captain in Jamie Benn. Second period, no scoring. And third period, uh, we add one. They add one. Lindholm. Is that Lindholm's first of the season? Quietly, uh, Elias Lindholm has not, had just had a quiet start to the season. They get one from Sagan. Uh, that might be Lindholm's first of the season. I completely forgot about him with all of our other players uh, doing all the work. Uh, there is Michael Backlund. And, like, again, Michael Backlund is on our third line, and he's putting up a four-point night. That's incredible. Oliver Shillington has his first really good night uh, on the third pairing. Three points for him and a plus-three rating. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau, again, another two goals for Johnny Gaudreau. Sean Monaghan, two points uh, and onward. And then another uh, decent night for Bingington, 900. Uh, he stays above 900. I don't think he's had a game where he's been a below 900 in save percentage. Uh, the main thing, though, is the wins. He's getting the wins for the Calgary Flames. Uh, so we got the Predators 
and then the Ducks on the 25th, and the Capitals as well, and that might be it for the month. I really want to finish this month here, so uh, we'll simulate the one here against the Predators. Second meeting of the season, by the way, uh, with the Nashville Predators. Uh, Goudreau, 14 points there, leading us. First period, wow, three points for, three goals for them. Uh, Tavalen, uh, Johansson, and Duchesne, second period, nothing. Oh, we might lose our first game of the season here. Third period, uh, yeah, we get one goal from Rasmus Anderson, but we do drop our first game of the season. So the Calgary Flames had such a perfect uh, start to the season. Unfortunately, we had to lose one. It, it was a bound to happen. 9-1-7, uh, still a good night for Bingington. Um, but yeah, we do drop our first game of the season at the hands of our uh, Western Conference opponent, Nashville Predators. But we still have a 9-1-0 record to start the season. I can't complain about that at all. Uh, so now we got the Anaheim Ducks and then the Capitals. And we will end this episode after the Penguins because we have the Penguins as well. So uh, let's finish up these games. Again, a divisional game here. Wouldn't mind getting the two points here against the Anaheim Ducks. First period, 2-0. On goals by Kachuk and Backlund. Uh, power play goal there, by the way, from Backlund. Christopher Steed gets his first goal of the season to make it 3-0. Uh, Wilson, Hannafin, Shillington all scoring. They get two uh, there at the end uh, by Sprung and uh, Manson. And that's the way the game will end. 6-2 for the Calgary Flames. Another offensive explosion by the Flames. A lot of spread out scoring in this one, too. Uh, all of our players getting it done. Uh, ooh, looks like Tam Talbot had to come in. Why does it say Talbot played zero minutes, but yet he made a save? That's... IK. That's weird. Bingington. Like, what? How does he make a save on zero minutes? The, that's got to be a glitch, right? I, I don't know. Um, 9 1 3 for Jordan Bingington. I don't know why Talbot made a save. Um, okay, it's not an injury, so that's weird. It's very weird. Uh, 10 1 and 0 to start the season. We got the Caps and the Pens, and then we will end this episode here. So, uh, try and fly through this. Uh, I don't know how we're doing on time. All right, first period goals from Wilson and Vanek. Second period, uh, nothing. Third period, uh, I can't get one from Jacob Verana. And the Flames lose their second goal, uh, or second game of the season. Unfortunately, not a lot of offense in that one. 10-2 and all to start season, and let's finish off with the Penguins. 16 points there in 12 games for Michael Backlund, by the way, on the third line. Um, yes, he's on the second power play unit, but I mean, my God, Michael Backlund. Um, he had a really good, quietly, a really good season last year as well on the third line for us. Um, you know, so, so glad Backlund's getting it done. All right, uh, first period here, uh, Chris Letang, Dylan Dubé. Second period, goals from Hannafin and Kachuk on the power play. And Zemkis Gergesen scoring for them. Do we hang on in the third period? Ah, they tie it up. We get a goal from Lindholm, uh, but they get one from former Flame Michael Stone and uh, Pedersen. Uh, so it looks like we're going to overtime with the Penguins. Overtime solves nothing. A shootout. No, nah, they get the shootout. So we do get a point out of this one. Uh, they get the extra point off the stick of Yegeni Malkin. Uh, suddenly, we've dropped three of our last four games to end off this uh, end off this month. Uh, but we're still really hot to start the season. So Wilson, mild concussion, estimated return. Uh, November 3rd. So we'll just quickly uh, fill in Devontae Smith-Pelly. Uh, and then we'll start the next episode like that. So, All right. Yeah, so not a bad way to start the 2021-2022 uh, the, uh, season for the Calgary Flames, if you ask me. Uh, we go, what, 10-2-1 uh, and one to start the season. 21 points. We do lead the league in that category, I believe. Yes, we do. Uh, we lead the NHL in points right now. 10 wins, 21 points in 13 games. Not a bad way to start the season. Johnny Gaudreau's on fire. Michael Backlund's on fire. Jordan Bennington's on fire. Uh, the Calgary Flames are just on fire overall. What a way to start the season for the Calgary Flames here in episode 18. So we will continue our uh, tour at start to the season in episode 19. I think we might even start the episode by offering this guy right here a contract extension. It's pretty hard not to after the way he started this season. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting him locked up again. $9 million for eight years is not bad. Um, you know, when you see what some of the other stars in the league are making, that's not bad. Um, also want to continue to gauge Manjapani and uh, continue to get some of these guys out of the way as well. Uh, but yeah, like the start to the season, obviously. You definitely can't uh, can't not like that. Uh, yes, we did lose uh, three of our last four technically uh, to end the month, but what a start we had uh, to the regular season. So we'll pick up all of the rest of this uh, and everything else uh, in the regular season uh, uh, in the next episode, episode 19.